So, in the previous class, we started looking at different mechanisms and some of them being very simple. Intuitively, we could answer the question, is this a mechanism or is this a structure? Does it move or not? And if it moves, how many degrees of freedom it would have? Okay. But as we went along, we found it to be a little more complicated and therefore, this intuitive feeling should be supported by a generic approach. Given any mechanism, we should be able to figure out how many degrees of freedom this fellow is likely to have. And then we discussed that uh, the methodology. We had a few of our students contribute to what we called as AVA formula. In textbooks, it would be called Grubler's Kurzbach equation for degrees of freedom. The idea was that you count the number of links. Each link when free in plane motion would have three degrees of freedom. One of them would be fixed. So, if there are L links, L minus 1 is the number of links that you would actually have which would be moving. So, 3 into L minus 1 if they were independent of one another freely moving in the plane, but they are joined together to form the mechanism. So, we asked the question how many joints are there which would in the cases that we considered, we were looking at revolute joint and prismatic joint, each of them would knock off 2 degrees of freedom. Therefore, we said if there are j number of joints, 2 j degrees of freedom should be subtracted. The resulting number is the degrees of freedom of the mechanism. That is the formula that we got. Let us look at some examples to illustrate how this formula can be applied. We have already done that in the previous class. I want you to look at some more mechanisms in today's class to so that you are fully conversant with this approach, not just the formula, but the thinking behind the formula that you need to look at the number of links, their original degrees of freedom, how many of those degrees of freedom have been removed have been knocked off by the constraints that we have imposed. So, let us take this example. This again I have taken from Norton's book. Okay. This we discussed in the previous class towards the ending and we said it says 1 degree of freedom. Right? It, the number of links are 8, we numbered there and the number of joints turned out to be 10. So, 8 links minus 1, 7 into 3, 21 degrees of freedom if they were left free to themselves. Then you have put 10 joints including the sliding joint there. Some of you missed that. So, including this sliding joint here, there were 10 joints and therefore, we had and there is a double joint here between 3 and 4 and between 4 and 5. So, keeping this in mind, 10 joints would knock off 20 degrees of freedom and 21 minus 20. So, this turned out to be a single degree freedom mechanism. I just want you to ponder over this that uh, statement that this complex looking mechanism, it has 8 links, okay. it is fairly complex. Whereas, uh, this, this has 2 degrees of freedom, uh, 1 degree of freedom, whereas the previous example, we saw this, right. This is a 2 hour manipulator, we said. It has only 3 links, one of them is fixed and only 2 moving links and it has 2 degrees of freedom. Whereas, this particular example that I am talking about now has 8 links, one of them is fixed all the other seven are moving and still it has only one degree of freedom. What would that mean? If I have just one motor or hydraulic actuator or pneumatic actuator or whatever you have driving any one of those coordinates, remember the degrees of freedom would mean the minimum number of coordinates required to specify the mechanism completely. 
minimum number of independent coordinates. Let's choose, it has single degree freedom, let's choose any one of the coordinates. Let me say that I choose this theta 2, orientation of this. Now, if I put a motor here and drive this link 2 with respect to the ground, ground has the stator part of the motor, the rotor part I attach to link 2. So, the, as the motor is turning, the link 2 would rotate. Then rest of all the seven links would have a controlled motion. They cannot have any arbitrary motion. So, however complex a machine may look, however huge or small, however complex or simplistic looking mechanism, it depends upon the degrees of freedom how the machine would have resulting motion. How many coordinates you need to drive? How many actuators would you need? If you were to provide less than the number of actuators, <coughs> supposing it is a 2 degree of freedom, but I just put one more actuator, one motor, then it would be what is called an under actuated system. We would not be discussing it in this class, but the dynamics of such undergraduate, under actuated mechanisms is by itself interesting. Perhaps you would make use of gravity to support the motion of other links, but you may have only one actuator instead of the two degrees of freedom and so on and so forth. It, it opens up some interesting possibilities when you look at under actuated systems. But in our course, we would be essentially considering single degree freedom systems and as you can see in this example, they can be as complex as you get. We would be looking at that single degree of freedom being actuated by an IC engine, hydraulic actuator, pneumatic actuator, electric motor, whatever you have, okay, fair enough. I have taken an example from the literature. This is an IEEE International Conference on Robotics, I think about 10 years back. So, this is an attempt to make a single degree freedom system. This whole complex looking mechanism, please understand the notation that when you show something like this all in one color shading, it would mean a one single link. Okay. Because we have been talking only about motion transmission, the shape of the link did not matter to us till now and so it would be till mid semester. When I start talking in terms of forces to be transmitted and therefore, I take cognizance of the fact that these are finite mass and inertia systems that I am trying to drive. Then force and torque would require what is the distribution of the mass. But as far as only motion is concerned, how they are joined together is important. The shape of the link does not matter. So, I just draw arbitrarily shaped links. Okay. Keep that perspective in mind. What it shows here is that this is one link, this is another link, this triangular piece. There are revolute joints on this link at three positions. It is connected to this link, this other link, this link and so on and so forth. Okay. So, what were they trying to do? As you can see from the title I have put here, it is an exoskeleton mechanism for finger rehabilitation. There is a body of research that is happening around the world in rehabilitation robotics, let us say. People who have had injuries, amputations, recovering from injuries, whatever. So, you have assistive devices. This device is intended, one research group of researchers has published it in the International Conference on Rehabilitation Robotics. You can see the way the finger is curling. They are trying to get that motion exoskeleton, so it will be attached to the body of the patient. So, they are trying to mimic and get that motion of a finger curling onto itself, but with a simple mechanism, I mean a simple meaning single degree freedom. So, it is easier to control. You could design a very complex multi degree freedom mechanism also, but what they are attempting to do is this. So, those of you who are interested in studying more can look up some of these references. This is another attempt 
at uh, uh, you know walking machine leg okay you would see here this is a machine that has this leg the leg touches the ground and then this machine can walk okay so it is a single degree freedom pantograph mechanism shebishev pantograph leg mechanism they have called this has come sometime back about 4 years 5 years back in the literature so you can look up these papers those of you who are interested and choose to work in some of these areas if you are interested again this is like a uh, fairly complex mechanism but has simple single degree freedom system so one motor one actuator hydraulic pneumatic whatever it is one actuator can do the job complete mechanism will run based on the commands given by one actuator that is the meaning of single degree freedom system this is another example on the lines that i mentioned just now about this exoskeleton based mechanisms for rehabilitation robotics okay so this is another group that's working in university of tianjin in china this has come in 2018 about 4 years back okay so you would try to put it at the knee of a patient who is trying to recover from say knee injury or knee surgery and you are trying to correct the gait okay so such devices would be very helpful what is it that they are trying to do here you have essentially the mechanism that you see this is a struct system they have put onto the patient as you can see the crucial part is this one that you see in yellow color or here in white and that is what i have captured here okay how many links does this have five right how many degrees of freedom would it have you have to be louder otherwise i cannot hear you one okay how many of you feel it is one well, how would we find out there are five links right so it is shown here itself l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 okay five links are there one of them is grounded so four four threes are 12 degrees of freedom correct if they were these four bodies were independent free to move in that plane how many joints are there count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay four free links so four threes were 12 five twos are 10 so 10 degrees of freedom have been knocked off by these five joints so how many degrees of freedom would it have two so you will need two motors two actuators to have controlled motion of this mechanism of course you would also notice unlike what we have been discussing so far you would also notice that because it is meant to be assistive device for a patient recovering from a knee injury they have put torsional springs at the joints to provide that cushion that is very much needed that compliance in the system so one could design we would discuss such springs and masses and so on acting together post mid semester okay so, third or fourth quarter of this course but for now we our mechanisms wouldn't really have spring sense so on this is just to indicate to you what is the state of art in these topics that we are discussing so those of you who are interested can proceed further we will look at some more examples look at this this is taken again from norton design of machinery book how many degrees of freedom would this have who would help somebody from this side who any volunteer then i i am not interested in the answer honestly <coughs> i want to see how you proceed right yeah five links uh, there are five links okay 1 2 3 4 5 correct five links and six joints, six joints. six joints okay so five links that's what's your name dhruv 
ध्रुव शेष नंबर ऑफ लिंक्स इज फाइव नंबर ऑफ जॉइंट्स इज सिक्स सो डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इज थ्री इज दट राइट लेट सी नंबर ऑफ लिंक्स इज बींग फाइव सो थ्री इंटू फाइव माइनस वन माइनस सिक्स इंटू टू राइट है वॉट हैपन ध्रुव वट हैपन Huh? So, is this correct? No, no. Aditya feels it is not correct. Okay, right? You have more links, less links, less links. Okay. So, but it is there. So it is there, but uh, like if the other two links tries the motion, uh -huh. so the job of that link is to just kind of follow C. So we can kind of. No, no, but the link is there, so you have to count it. You don't like it or I don't like it, doesn't matter, right? The link is there, it is connected to other links. N is 5, number of joints is 6, so degrees of freedom turns out to be? Anybody has any opinion on that? Right there. Yes, ma'am. Hello, yes. T-shirt. What's your name? Para. Para. Yeah. So, what do you feel? Is this correct? Zero degrees of freedom. That means this cannot move. No, it is not correct. Why it is not correct? Huh? It can move. Why do you think it can move? Yes. Huh? Six links. Why? Where are the six? Three is three from ground. Okay. You mean joints or links? There is only one triangular piece link. You have connected it to two, three other links through three joints. A single link can have multiple joints. That means it is connected to multiple links. There is no problem with that. But it is still a single link. So, one, one link is a ground link. So, this is one funny shaped link to which you have attached other links at different points through revolute joints. So, there is one link whose parts do not have any relative motion. Right? It is fixed link, ground link. How many of you agree with uh, Dhruv's analysis that this should have zero degrees of freedom. How many of you agree? Oh my God. Dhruv, you don't have any friends, hardly two or three fellows. You don't even believe your own formula. So what is wrong? Is the number of links that we have estimated wrong? Is the number of joints estimated wrong? Is the formula wrong? Did I make a calculation mistake? Then why don't you believe that this fellow has zero degrees of freedom. It appears absolutely beautiful. What's your name? Pragyesh. Pragyesh feels just as Farah felt. And we have taken so much trouble. I have made so many links, so many joints. I have joined them together and you are telling me that it cannot move. It has to move. Right? How many of you feel so? Intuitively you feel that it will move. But logically are you convinced that it cannot move? No. Huh? Why? Just try to, if it were only this part, start from here. Go here, outer fellows. Would it move? So, assume that this in, in between fellow is not there. Would it move? Yes or no? Yes. How many degrees of freedom it would have? One. 
correct? Now I added this fellow in between. I thought I am trying to help it, this mechanism that is moving by taking the load. Maybe it will share the load, it will make the motion smooth, whatever, whatever I had thought of. So I put something in between. And now it turns out that this cannot move at all. What's the problem? Sir, I think that virtue of the fact that these are kind of parallel. Uh -huh. They are not a parallel. Okay. So Aditya is nudging me to go to my next picture, which is this. Would this move? How many of you feel this would move? Pakka. Huh. Large number of you feel that this would move. What is Drew's analysis? How many links, how many joints? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Same number of links, joints, everything is same. But I have done the trick. What Aditya intuitively <coughs> felt and therefore said that even this first mechanism should move. Okay. It's the same number of links, same number of joints and all that. But what was missing in the first figure, what has been rectified here is that they were made exactly same parallelogram linkage. Now this moves. This has become actually superfluous. This is not needed. It really doesn't do anything. But such parallelogram linkages are used. We, we would probably discuss it if time permits at some time. Um, for those of my friends from metallurgical engineering, this was in fact an example from a furnace or a boiler. A large number of, uh, you can turn this around, think that there is a vertical stack of links joined together through a parallelogram mechanism and into the furnace were being fed whether it is coal or you know any such items into the furnace. So this was a mechanism or a machine being used in BHL and they had some difficulties with that mechanism. So they came to us to do some analysis to figure out how to make it operate smoothly. So we had done that analysis. So if I pull it out and time permits, I will discuss that application. What did we do? Yes. What's your name? Bhavna. Bhavna. Yes. Fixed link and moving link. Okay. Fixed link, for example, in the first case. So let's assume that it is like this. may not exactly correspond with what is there, so do not bother. So what we have done is that we have one link, we have another link, we have a third joint there and then we have joined a piece like this. So this is link 1, this whole thing is hatched, this is ground. This is link 1, link 2, link 3, 4 and 5, okay. It is the same thing that we have done there except that all I have done in the second figure is that I have adjusted these fellows such that it just becomes. the same thing. It can still have the same shape if you want, does not matter. <laughs> it 
it can still have the same shape. This is clear? So, you cannot blindly apply the your, either your intuition or the formula. You have to be a little careful when you look at mechanisms. Just because you have put a set of links together through joints, it does not necessarily mean that this would move. Please. Sir, in that, in this parallel, parallel one, one of the links is not configured. One of the links is not configured. And if we apply the triangle, root a triangle of the links, I, I didn't get, please repeat. It's parallel of the same length, it has to be a parallelogram. It has to be, parallel. has to be. then only this would move. If you match the ratio, yeah, probably you could make it move, yes. But it would still be the same number of links, same number of joints, your degree of freedom would be predicted to be zero. But you have cleverly <laughs> manipulated that you can make it move. Mm -hmm. So basically that in that uh, figure, this figure. These three links are parallel, parallel. Uh, not of the same length, but still it can move. Like they can. That means you would adjust the link uh, four, whatever I have put five. Yes. Size and shape of that link five, you will adjust. How can we be sure of what's your name? Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu has a fundamental question, like the. If I understood Abhimanyu's worry correctly, Baba, you made, you taught us, you are supposed to be knowing the subject as a professor. You came and taught us degree of freedom is given by Grubler, Kurzbach formula or whatever. And then you are showing case example where the formula does not, it is misleading. How do I trust what you teach me? That is his fundamental worry. Correct, no Abhimanyu? Sort of, yeah. He can't be so blunt, obviously, on my face. So, sort of, okay. Yeah. So, the point is that being a first course in a subject, we are introducing you, exposing you to the concepts of the course, giving you some tools to play around with. But when we do that, there is an underlying feeling of you know trusting something implicitly blindly. Like many of us trust whatever is a printed matter in the textbook has to be correct, you know. So the counter example I have taken here is to just caution you that not always does the formula work. You can actually think of a few more such cases where the formula would not work. So, you have to be careful. It works most cases and therefore, you tend to think that, huh, I mean, this is the formula I should apply. Unfortunately or fortunately, sometimes the particular question given in the exam, the formula may not work. You have to be careful. You have to apply your common sense. You have to train your intuition, like Farah felt that this should move, you know, I mean, it looks like it would move. Yes, it does move provided you play, played around with the link lengths to make them parallel. Hmm? Clear? Don't know. Okay. Ah, so, we were uh, Arpit was telling me last class, where are you Arpit? Huh. Was telling me all the time you are talking only about lower pairs and all that. When will we talk about higher pairs? Okay. So, this you remember when we looked at joints, we classified them into two groups. One is based on the uh, lower pairs, based on the fact that it has surface contact between the two bodies which are joined together. Sliding joint, the whole surface slides on the surface of the other link. Now, higher pairs have only line or point contact. So, here you are 
two examples. So, you can imagine that there is a point contact here and it becomes a line contact because you will think of the dimension out of this board. Okay. So, it becomes a line contact when these two bodies of finite thickness roll over each other. Okay. So, this is what we would use for gears. So, we would actually use the concept of pitch circle as though two circles, imaginary circles are rolling against each other at the point of contact when I come to the topic of gearing to be able to transmit motion at a uniform speed ratio because there are two circles rolling. You can imagine that if this fellow is rolling at 1000 rpm, is rotating at 1000 rpm, the other link, other body will rotate at a speed, constant speed based on the ratio of the radii. Okay. So, we would see what profile, what profile of gearing would ensure such smooth transmission of motion and so you would see everywhere gears are being used. So, we would try to step back, imagine that gears were not there. If you have to develop gears, how would you have done it? How would it somebody think of a certain gear tooth profile to be something like this and not anything else? Okay. On the right side is a cam and a follower. I gave this example of a cam and follower system, which again we will discuss sometime in February. When you needed to get for a finite amount of time, what we call as a dwell. So, I gave the example, particular example of an IC engine valve that when you are as for the time period for which you are taking in the gases or you are pushing out exhaust gases, the valve should be open and stay open. For the remaining time, it should shut and stay shut for a finite amount of time, which is not infinitesimally small. Of course, it is a different fact that it keeps on rotating at a few thousand rpm, so it appears to be fast. It is fast, but it is still a finite amount of time and not an infinitesimally small thing, time that you could probably get in a mechanism, in a linkage mechanism. Brief instantaneous dwell is possible, but not otherwise. So, we have come up with what are called cam follower systems. We would see the simple idea that is thought of in cam followers when we discuss. Here again, the contact is only point or line when you look at the thickness completely. Okay. Now, let us look at some simple system involving these. How many degrees of freedom would this have? Think of them as two rolling discs or two gears, one, right? Any doubt? Would your formula give you one? Can you please check? How many links? How many links are there? Three. Yes, how many joints? So, three means one is fixed, say two, two, three are six degrees of freedom. How many joints? How many joints? Three. But uh, ah, it is not restraining two degrees of freedom. Only one degree of freedom it is restraining. Two link joints are restraining two degrees of freedom. Okay. So, the formula probably will need a modification you think. Okay. So, go back to your rooms and read up Shigley, Ucker, Norton, whatever it is and all that stuff. So, you understand what we are trying to drive at in terms of how to estimate degrees of freedom. You please do not continue to only rely on your intuitive feel that yes, this would move, it seems to have single degree of freedom. It is good to have that intuitive feel, but you also should see how you would logically figure it out based on the number of links, joints, types of joints and so on and so forth. Yes. Yes. In the, in this example, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, sir. Where the joints are? Two joints are obvious, right? Two joints are these two joints. So just imagine these two fellows. Let me see if I can draw a circle properly. Okay, so this is one ground, this is two, this is three. Okay, just imagine that these two discs are apart. Okay, then they would keep rotating if you drive them. Now you start bringing them closer and closer, just when they touch each other is the case that we are considering here. So here, now as they come closer and closer and just they touch each other, now you have put an additional constraint which was not there until now, that the point of contact between these two disks should have only one velocity, same velocity. There is no slipping allowed. Okay. So, it is useful to think in terms of the way in which we actually derived the formula also in the previous couple of classes of our discussion. When left free to themselves, how are they moving? Now by virtue of the fact that you are putting them together and having a constrained motion, what is the type of constraint you are placing on that? If these were separate, no problem at all, they are moving by themselves. But as you brought them closer and closer and they just started touching. Now the trouble with just touching is that you may or may not be able to depend upon this touching to transmit motion in a machine. That is why we would have positive transmission using gears and so on. You would put that profile of a gear tooth and rather than just the two discs touching each other, you would actually have gears meshing. Then 100% as long as this pinion is moving, other gear would rotate. Okay. So, we will discuss that. But the basic idea is this, these are called pitch circles. So, think of them as just touching each other and there is therefore one constraint coming in at the point of contact. That is also okay. But here it is not a lower pair, it is a higher pair joint because the contact is at one point or one line as you can think of. Yes, what is your name I forgot? Akshay. Akshat. There are two links, there are three links. Where did I draw? Here, right here. Fixed link, one disc, one disc. Three links, no, one link is fixed. It does not move, but it is there. Huh? Okay. Anything else? Yes. Sir, the doubt is there. Can we ensure that your work can exist in such a mechanism? Yes, yes. You can try. Of course, also you can think of a chain or belt, you know, Akshat. Apart from gearing, you can think in terms of a gear with this, uh, if they have, if they cannot be brought closer, then you will have like in the case of a cycle, okay. You are generating motion somewhere, so you have the design of a sprocket and then a chain that transmits the motion, okay. Or a belt for example, you, earlier days we used to have a floor mill near the market gate, Y point gate. I do not know if it is still there, but you would see that is a huge belt that there is a motor at the bottom fixed to the ground, but the motor shaft has a belt to the machine. So, you will transmit motion because you cannot bring them closer. The machine is quite tall. So, you cannot bring the driving driven parts closer to the motor down, then you will have a belt. Okay. So, if it is possible to bring them closer together, make them touch, then you can do gearing. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. So, we have, I think we have triggered enough 
curiosity in our minds about degrees of freedom, about mechanisms, about how you put them all together to have, let me put it as a set of bodies being put together, links being put together through joints to have a certain controlled motion and that we called as the degrees of freedom, one degree, two degrees and so on and so forth. So now let us go to the next topic, logical extension, once you have as analyzed that this fellow can move, it has one degree of freedom, let us say, that degree of freedom is specified to you, how will the rest of the mechanism be, okay. Let me go back to, before I talk about this analysis, this example, okay. Now you have designed it, you know that it is a single degree freedom mechanism, okay. All the link lengths are finalized, given now that you are driving this link to with a motor. So at a given point of time, I tell you that link 2 is at 30 degree orientation. How will you find where all other links are? That is the problem of position analysis. If link 2 were moving at that position instantaneously when theta is 30 degrees, it is moving at 100 rpm. How would be, how do you estimate the velocity of other links? If you ever get any doubt, always think in terms of the example I mentioned in one of the previous classes. Just think of your hand as a robotic manipulator, at the end you have the gripper, end effector. You are trying to catch an object on an industry floor shop, right. So how would I move, if I am moving this, how would this end effector position be and at that position, what will be its velocity? And how does it approach that position with what acceleration? And this ultimately will lead us to ask the question, when I am trying to grip an object, with what force will I grip it? And that has to be very different for an application in say an industrial shop floor in you are doing an automotive parts manufacturing or you are holding the gun for painting or your gripper is holding a rasgulla, right. The force has to be different. So I should know how to estimate the position, velocity, acceleration and using these three and the mass inertia properties of the various links, what is the force that I would feel? Of course, if it were a course in robotics or mechatronics and so on, I would have said that you would need to have correspondingly position sensors, each motor rot angle I should be able to sense and feedback to a central controller. I should have an accelerometer probably and definitely it would help to have a force sensor at the gripper, so that I know with what force I am actually gripping. What I designed it to be is one thing, but what actually is, that needs to be measured at each instant of time and the control law should take care if this fellow is not what it should have been, what you sat down and designed and then made it and then started, the machine is operating. In actual conditions, if this force with which it is gripping the rasgulla or the laddu or the painting gun, it is not what is there as per design, then my control law should take care of that, should adjust the motor torques, currents such that I achieve what I designed it to be, okay. See how these two courses come together in the actual application, okay. You might have been taught a course in, uh, I do not know, microprocessors, what is it called nowadays, mechatronics course, theory course, lab course, robotics course, kinematics and dynamics of machines course. So you may have a large number of courses, but 
the robot that is being used, the machine that is being used in Tata Motors or in Tirupati Temple does not know that IIT Bombay curriculum may ME 316 hai, ME 370 another temple, ME 421 is something else, they does not care. The machine has to operate in actual conditions. All the knowledge that you gain from these individual courses has to be integrated into the design and operation of that machine. Okay, so that is what integration you need to do. That is why first year you were taught integration so that you will be doing all the integration for the rest of the life. Okay. Let us see how we will do the position analysis. I would talk about first position velocity acceleration analysis. So, I would we would call it as a kinematic analysis. When I remove that MA, it becomes kinetic analysis, okay, which would help us to estimate the forces. So, kinematic analysis, then I will go to kinetic analysis. Is that okay? So, we will first start with simple thing called the position analysis. How do I do position analysis? I will discuss three approaches. First two approaches are important for this course. The third approach is important for those of students in the class from mechanical engineering background who are going to do a lab, I am told uh, ME 370, whatever 372, uh, where they would use Adams software. So, we would try to understand in the third approach, first two approaches are how you would do it yourself, position analysis. But if a software is able to do, that means you are able to formulate this problem in a way that a computer program can automatically do it. How that is possible? So, that is what is the third approach. I will illustrate it for a position analysis so that you understand when you are solving problems using Adam software in your lab. You do not do on the screen mouse like a click, 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 click and done analysis result, do not do that. You will be able to understand when I am doing this, this is what the software is doing behind the screen. Okay. So, that is the third approach, it is not needed for this course, it is actually not part of the syllabus either. But because I learnt that you are doing this lab also, I thought it would be useful for you to know about this. So, the first approach would be what I would call as a geometric approach or graphical approach, very simple, intuitive, easy. Okay. The second approach would be analytical, you would define x, y coordinates, vectors, take components and so on and so forth, so analytical. And the third approach is to make it amenable to computer implementation. Let us look at the geometric approach first. So, let us take the simple example of a slider crank mechanism. Now, what is given to you when I am talking about position analysis now, assume that degree of freedom and work has been done now. You know that the mechanism is mo moving, it is a mechanism, it is not a structure, it has one degree of freedom, it has uh, these link lengths, etc. Now, that independent degree of freedom is also specified to you now. So, given the pivot locations and slider motion axis, where is the pivot, where is the slider moving that direction, link lengths have been given for both slider crank mechanism in case you have forgotten. Okay, so, this is link 1, this is link 2, link 3, link 4, sorry, link 4 is the piston, let me try to put it here, okay. So, when you are looking at this slider crank mechanism, link lengths have been given means I know L2, 
L3 have been given. I know this location of the first pivot. I know that this slider is going to move on this axis. I do not know where it is on that axis, but that is a motion locus of that slider. Now, given this position theta 2, there is a motor here sitting and driving this. So, theta 2 is given to you. For all you care, theta 2 may be given as a function of time. You may say that it is simply rotating with a velocity of 100 rpm and uh, acceleration of 1 radian per second square. Okay. So, you are given that. So, at each instant of time, you know where this link will be. How will I find position of and orientation of link 3 and link 4? As you can imagine, this is a pure geometry problem, right? Clear? Is the problem clear? Anyone has a question about position analysis problem statement? Fair enough. You are a wonderful class. You understand everything that I say. So, I have given the procedure there. It is a graphical procedure, how you would draw it. So, I would first draw this pivot, which is what I have done there. And then you have to draw the link 2 in the orientation that you have been told, say supposing it is 110 degrees. So, you draw it in 110 degrees for the link length that has been given to you. Okay. Then you have also been told that the slider piston moves on this axis here. So, you draw sketch out that. Now, from the previous discussion, A B link 3 is a rigid link, right. So, B can only be at a position such that the length L A B does not change. Now, A is fixed here. This position is fixed. So, what would you do next? So, that is what here it is. Draw an arc of a circle at A with radius L 3 or L A B if you want to call it. Because A B is a rigid body, therefore, B is always at a fixed distance from A. So, all you have to do is simply that. Wherever it intersects the locus of B, absolute position locus is the sliding direction. Absolute position of B is this direction. Locus of B with respect to A is the circular arc of radius L A B and center as A. Wherever these two intersect, that would be the position of B, right? Fairly simple. So, I just complete the position analysis. I connect up the piston and the connecting rod. For each position, I can just do this. Any given theta 2, I should be able to do. Is there any difficulty at all whatsoever? You should in fact be able to do even for that 8 degree of freedom mechanism. I mean, sorry, 8, one, 8 link mechanism with single degree freedom, correct? So, you went back here all the way, yes. Even for this, you should be able to do this approach. If you are given theta 2 position, now these pivots are given. So, this pivot is given here. I am told this pivot is at this distance. I am told that this fellow is at an orientation of 60 degrees, let us say. L2 is given. So, I have O, what is the name given there? No names are given, so it is fine. So, O, A. Now, how will I find this point? This point. Yes. What is your name? Vaid. Okay. Very good. So, you will you get the drift of what Vaid is saying. So, I draw an arc of a circle with A as a center. The radius of that will be L3. I draw an arc of a circle 
with O, this you can call it O2, O1 if you wish and L4 as a radius and the intersection point, this will be L3, this will be L4 and like that you can keep on building up the entire mechanism. That is the meaning of 1 degree of freedom that the moment theta 2 has been specified, however complex the mechanism may be appearing to you, you can actually completely specify the entire motion. Because this triangular piece dimensions are known, so also these dimensions and so on, these pivot locations and this pivot orientation location, that sliding axis. So, given these data, what changes from time to time as the mechanism moves? is only one single degree of freedom which is theta 2. The moment theta 2 is specified, you can just go on building this entire mechanism. Is the position analysis problem clear? Graphical approach. All that you will need to remember for graphical approach is that fundamental limitation that we post for our discussion in this course that links are all rigid. The moment link is rigid, two points on the link A and B distance cannot change. So, you immediately think in terms of A as a center and draw an arc of a circle with B, L A B as a distance. And the point B where it is joined together between two links, it is a point on this link as well as on this link. That is how you could put a pin there, pin joint. Problem is solved. Is this clear? Anyone has any doubts? all set to solve problems of this type in the tutorial which we probably will have on Wednesday, coming Wednesday. Degrees of freedom more problems we will try to solve, position analysis. Also we would solve some more basic engineering mechanics problems so that you are mentally warm up ho jata hai. You are all ready for kinematics and dynamics. Is this clear? Anybody has any doubt please feel free to ask. Now, how would I extend it to velocity? If this graphical approach is so simple, intuitive, you can just do it in your notebook, correct? You do not really need, of course, you need a scale uh, factor to be able to draw. One link may be 5 centimeter, another link may be 25 centimeter. So, you need to really draw it appropriately, that is fine. How would I extend it to velocity? That means, the velocity analysis problem is that input crank, let us say this fellow theta 2 dot is given to you. You want to find what is the velocity of everybody else. Yes, wait. Today, this column is really taken off. Your column has slowed down. You know the velocity of point E, correct? Correct. You are almost there, but missing some crucial link. Yes. Sir, we can take the component of velocity of A along the link. Along the link and the link. Make it equal to what? Okay, let us go step by step as Vaid said that uh, you know the velocity, angular velocity of rotation of link 2. So, theta 2 dot is 100 rpm that is given to you, okay, 1000 rpm, 5000 rpm of the crankshaft of an IC engine. I want to know where the piston is at this point, okay. So, what he is saying is that you know the velocity of point A, 
What do you mean by that? You know the velocity of point A when theta 2 dot is say 1000 rpm, what is velocity of point A? L2 into theta dot. Ah. You have to specify both. So, it is this position analysis is done. Now, velocity analysis. theta 2 dot L 2 is V A correct? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. You are vasist. Yeah. Yeah, the velocity of who? Vasishta or Aditya or Ved or who? Huh? Link, a, Link A, B. Okay. Take the velocity component along the link. Hmm? And uh, the velocity component of B along the link will be Very good. Very good. Can you rephrase your thinking? Vasishta is saying velocity of a component along the line A B, velocity of B component along line A B should be same. Why? Because it is a rigid body, right? Because A and B cannot move towards each other or away from each other. Its length cannot reduce or increase. Component of velocity of A and B along the line A B should be same. Okay, can you rephrase that better? Easier for us to implement. Your idea is correct. Aditya, would you like to help him? Yes, sir. So, so I would like to divide this entire problem into a three-step process. So, number one, assume the velocity of uh, the slider to be in the horizontal direction. Decompose it. Step two would be decompose it into two parts. So, along this link and perpendicular to the link. So, along the length, as uh, Vishesh mentioned, it could be equal to uh, omega r, omega r's projection on the link. And for uh, the velocity perpendicular to the link, uh, what we can do is we can take the center of mass of uh, this link 3. And uh, so, from the center of mass, uh, we can have that omega r component, and that would be equal to the component along this direction. Okay. Has Aditya made it more complicated for us? Or made it hell. He asked the fields, yes. Yeah. You can simply do what? Arpit. We will come to that next. Okay. That is approach 2. I said we will do analytically. That is next approach. We are trying to do it now graphically using what we understand. Okay. About how this links should move with respect to each other. Anyone? Abhimanyu wants to contribute. He has raised his hand. Whether to, huh? yes Abhimanyu. A is clear, velocity of A is clear, L2 theta 2 dot and perpendicular to OA. Can you come from the other end? What would be B's velocity? B's velocity will be? Then forget A. Forget A. Finally, when you find B velocity, how should it be? Along this, what is this? You have to articulate. I cannot see this. This is along the slider direction. Yes, what is your name? Rona, okay. Uh, so, uh, what we can do is first we can assume that uh, point O is stationary and uh, depending on uh, theta d dot, uh, we can get the uh, velocity components of point A. Um, by 
and what you can use, you can add the component of velocity of for the block and uh, perform vector addition. That velocity should be equal to uh, for, uh, the velocity of point A due to motion of the block. Okay. Possible. What should be the direction of B's velocity finally when you eventually find it is a piston after all, it is a slider what you have shown Abhimanyu like this and Farah also was showing like this what is it? It is along the slider direction. So, I know if this is V A, V B is I do not know how much it is, I do not know how much it is I need to find that, but direction along sliding axis ok. Now, what is the step mi missing between these two V A either hai V B either hai what is missing between the two what is V B A omega omega is the length of u so the length of here who is omega omega of uh, I do not know that yet so about V B A what do I know huh? what do I know about V B A I cannot be more direct than this should not be along a B line because we said I mean it is like you know discovery of oxygen I, I am I keep giving this example in many many courses and invariably we come up with a situation which resembles that. You have studied the history of discovery of oxygen there were many people who were working around that time around that topic in the periphery, but who discovered oxygen? Now, the point there interesting point if you read the history of discovery of oxygen, people used to maintain notes you know in scientists at that time and then people have written that it is a purer form of air. Somebody has written it helps burning. So, they were all around there, but it required one fellow to jump thought say that air consists of many components this is one component of air called oxygen and therefore, we remember him as the discoverer of oxygen. So, here also we are almost there you were saying that component of velocity of A lay low component of velocity of B lay low they along the direction A B they should be same. Now, also Chandra Mowli right Chandra Mowli said that it should not be along the direction A B, but what should it be? What should be V B A direction? Huh? What is x direction? V B A perpendicular to A B. V B A has to be perpendicular to A B that is all direction has to be perpendicular to A B. Do I know the direction of A B or uh, do I know the direction of A B or I do not? I have done the position analysis just now. So, I know the direction of A B, I have just now drawn link 3 right. So, I know the direction of A B. So, I know two directions for the point B in the velocity. The locus of B with respect to A has to be along an arc of a circle perpendicular to A B in that direction it will be there ok in that direction and B with respect to ground absolute velocity of B has to be along the slider. 
So where will B be? When you have got two loci like this, that is what I have described in this slide. This is the point. A will only have tangential component of velocity. Absolute velocity of B can only be along the slider axis. Relative velocity of B with respect to A can only be perpendicular to line AB by virtue of the fact that it is a rigid link. Okay. So, how would I do the velocity analysis graphically? So, I, I draw the locus of B first from the point O, any arbitrarily chosen point O origin, I draw OA of length L2 theta dot perpendicular to OA. So, if you, so OA, I was trying to show that it is reasonably perpendicular to OA position. This has been at, achieved in position analysis. So, OA will be perpendicular to this OA and length will be L2 theta 2 dot. Okay. Then when I find the point B, small b in that velocity polygon, here in this case it turns out to be because only number of points is less, it is a triangle, more complex cases it could be a polygon. So, in the velocity polygon, B is eventually going to be in this line that was one locus. Another locus I have is that VBA perpendicular to AB. AB position is there because Vaid has just now helped us to do the position analysis. So, I know positions AB, OA. So, I can draw lines perpendicular to those. Wherever they intersect, that is going to be the point of B and OB length will give me the absolute velocity of point B, the slider. Just go over it mentally and tell me if it is okay or not. So, OAB is the velocity polygon that we want. So, now you have found out what is B's velocity. Is this clear or anything still not clear? Yes. Okay. So, let us go step by step. You know that the B's locus has to be on this line because B is a slider. You fix any point to O, does not matter where you draw, where you start drawing it. OA is a vector of length L2 theta 2 dot because that is R omega of the point A. The direction should be such that it is perpendicular to the OA position. At this position, it, velocity of A is perpendicular to the crank. Okay, so, it, you have to draw it perpendicular to it. Is that clear? Then I, once I have found this point A, this is actually given data. There is nothing new I have done there. Now, from here I need to find where is B going to be in this diagram. B clear, we know two things. One is this locus, which is this straight line. Another is this locus, which is wherever B is, velocity of B with respect to A has to be perpendicular to the line AB because it is a rigid body. AB is a rigid body. VBA direction, you know, not the magnitude, I do not know yet. So, I draw this second locus, wherever these two loci intersect, that is the point B. Now, OB, so this is your velocity polygon finally. So, this is L2 theta 2 dot, this is VB, after you draw it, you, okay, you can find out. So, OB gives you and you can tell whether the piston is moving to the left or right or whatever it is. How will I find, sorry, last question, then we will wind up. How will I find theta 3 dot, omega 3? from this, then we can say velocity analysis is complete. 
VBA by so this is VBA VBA divided by L3 gives me right so this is how you would do velocity analysis but you will notice that I could not have done this velocity analysis directly so always remember velocity analysis can be done only after position analysis because you are asking me to draw this perpendicular to OA, this perpendicular to AB and all that. I will know that only after I have done position analysis. Similarly, tomorrow, I mean next class I will discuss acceleration analysis. If you do not do position and velocity, you cannot do acceleration. They go one after the other. Okay, we will stop here.